Because here M is 1, here M is 0. Above this line, when you plot a straight line, it will have its slope greater than 0. Like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and so on. The maximum will reach here, which will be equal to 1. And then it will be M greater than 1. And here it becomes undefined, huge. So we are in this range. That is, this range is called the ordinary conductor range. And here we have come to know that our this constant, our this constant should be less than 1, right? If I define resistance and this resistance 1 ohm is a very small unit because resistances are in kilo ohms. So this R is somehow greater than 1, like 2, 3, 4. But here I cannot write 2, 3, 4. Here whatever I will write it should be less than 1. Otherwise my equation will not be right. So how to make this thing less than 1? Misappropriated. And this tells us that in this region that constant is actually equal to 1 over r. It cannot be r. Right? So I will write that i is proportional to v i is equal to a constant v and this constant must be less than r must be less than 1 so this is 1 over r because r is greater than 1 and v and this implies v equals i r and this is the right way to write the Ohm's law to write the equation not this one. This is absolutely wrong. Because in that situation you will have to write V here and I here. And then your dependent and dependent are jumbled. It's not right. Your independent should be on this axis. While the dependent should be here. You got it? So our decision of keeping this constant less than 1 is our limitation of the Ohm's law. That this law is not for the superconductor. This law is not for the ideal conductor. This law is not for the ideal insulator. It is only for the ordinary conductor. And it comes in this range. Clear? You got it? So, one thing you have decided. That it will be equal to this. Clear? Yes. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, can you, can you explain this that uh, on the y axis we are not giving any voltage but we are having undefined uh, current? Yes, you are not giving any voltage here yes. because this, you are looking to this guy. This guy is not for this range. All this is for better range for this law. The law is varied only here. That will be the ideal superconductor. Current will be flowing on itself.
we normally write the Newton's second law of motion is F equals M. Now, F equals MA is a fundamental law of physics. But this is the limited version of it. This is not the full version of it. We actually know that the Newton's second law is actually the rate of change of linear momentum is called force and the rate of change of angular momentum in the angular terminology is equal to the torque. Both these are forces but this is the linear force, this is the rotational force. You call the rotational analog of a force. This force will always move something or translate something, while this force will always rotate something. It can never translate. So, this I can write F equals D over DT, and this P I write MV. Now, product rule, and this will be M dV over DT plus V dm over dt. Now, if we are having a situation that our mass will not depend on time, means with time the mass will remain constant, then we will say that this term is going to zero because the derivative of constant is zero. So it is this limiting condition that makes our law equals F equals M A D V by D T is A. F equals M A. So this is the limited version. Now you see that F equals M A. Now in this equation you will have to decide what's the power of F? 1 and the power of A is 1. So it is again a linear relation, somehow like this. And this linear relation I can plot. As I discussed with you, both the ways are right. If you say A proportional to F, and then the constant of proportionality is 1 over M. Or uh, if you say that F the A proportional to F, the A proportional to 1 over M and the constant of proportionality is 1. But just look from the equation of a straight line. What is the dependent and independent variable here? Force is independent and acceleration is dependent. We give force and acceleration is produce. We will discuss this thing a little bit more when we will do here that what are the very common misconceptions about this law. But for the moment I know that the dependent is A while the independent is F. So A is equal to some constant in F. What should be this constant? Again, it's a question. What should be this constant? Y. Means why we will write this constant is 1 over n. So come back again here. This is your force, which is the independent one. And this is your acceleration, which is the dependent one. And let's say I now plot the linear response means the slope which is m equals 1. This one. This is slope m equals 0. This is slope m equals 1. This is slope equals 100. What does this mean? Slope equal to? Uh, first you say what does this mean? You are giving a force and no acceleration is produced. It will be exactly on this level. You are not giving any force.
pores and the body is accelerating. So these two situations are not under the regime of F equal to M. What will be this situation? You give one newton of force and you get one meter per second square acceleration because one unit of this and one unit of this. Clear? Okay. So first understand how we can discuss newton. How much one newton is? How much one newton is? Just imagine. Just imagine then how much one newton force will be. You are having an equation and this equation is F equals mg from the same here. You are having F equal to mg. The acceleration is now a defined acceleration which you call the gravity acceleration. This g is approximately 10 meter per second square. Because I will not write none 9.8 because they will make our calculation difficult. This is approximately 10. So if I write that this one is 10 and how this one should be in order to get one newton here. M. What should be? One over ten. So one over ten means what? One over ten of a kg is actually hundred gram. So if you are having hundred gram in your palm, it is exerting one newton force, right? So you can imagine how much one newton is. Clear? One over ten of a kg is hundred gram. So 100 gram you are having in your hand, this is one newton force, it is exerting on your hand. So look here, is it possible, you see, 100 gram if there it will cause one newton force. So, when f will be equals, when f will be equals to 1, Newton, then acceleration should be equal to 1 meter per second square. It will be this time. Normally we don't have such a situation. Our force is more and our acceleration is less. So the mass is actually in inverse proportion to the accelerator, acceleration. Now it is unlike V equal to I R. It's a bit different situation. Now it is linear equation. Now you think of the mass. The more the mass, more will be the force required in order to achieve a certain acceleration. So mass is playing the reciprocal force. It means you are not in this region, you are in this region. And again here, M will be, and again here, M will be equal to less than 1. So I will say that this constant, this now this M is actually slow, this is not mass. So our this constant must be. 1 over m and not m here. Clear? And this will make your equation is f equals m. Now, few misconceptions about the Newton second law. The very first thing, the very first thing that we do ignore here this F is not a single force right this F is not a single force this F is actually the summation of all forces summation of all forces whatever forces are there 
This U defined is the net force. Like this book is on the table. There is a force of gravity on it. 